The National Advisory Committee on Immunizations says it is not pulling its approval of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine for use in Canada, but it is recommending against administering the shot in anyone under the age of 55. So is the Advisory Committee for Health Canada until detailed studies are done. The updated guidance came amid new data from Europe suggesting the risk of blood clots following vaccination is now potentially up to 1 in 100,000, much higher than the 1 in 1 million risk believed before. Meanwhile, Canada was expecting around 1.5 million doses of the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine from the United States yesterday through truck deliveries. Provincial governments decide on their own how to use a vaccine, but Dr. Howard New, Canada's Deputy Chief Medical Officer of Health, says all provinces and territories have agreed to suspend the use of the vaccine for those under 55, pending the results of further study by Health Canada. Well, to talk more on the AstraZeneca vaccine developments in our TIA Health medical segment, we are joined by Dr. Abhishek Rout, Medical Director at Apple Tree Medical Group. Welcome back to Forum Daily, Doctor. Thanks so much for having me. So uh, what does this new data from Europe say about the AstraZeneca vaccine safety? Well, obviously some justifiable concern here for the AstraZeneca vaccine, specifically for the condition known as vaccine-induced prothrombotic immune thrombocytopenia, or VIPIT. Uh, we certainly have seen a roller coaster of news for AstraZeneca. One week, everything seems okay, and the next week, we do have some concerns about blood clots. But really, the new research from the Paul Ehrlich Institute in Germany uh, puts that possibility of blood clots from 1 in 1 million to 1 in 100,000, which means that that risk was almost 10 times off. So definitely some safety concerns here. Yes, very concerning, doctor. Uh, and why is the NACI recommending against giving the shot to those under the age of 55? Why particularly this uh, demographic? That's a, that's a good thought. So the initial studies also looked at the age ranges of, uh, of where these blood clots occurred. And they found two things. One is it was more likely to occur in women and it was more likely to occur under the age of 50. Uh, so because of that, what we're seeing is those risk factors are specifically linked uh, to those uh, at a younger population. And that's why uh, NASI has targeted that, right? Keep in mind, of course, that COVID is also dif definitely disproportionately affecting our seniors and those age uh, 65 and above. Uh, and so when we look at the risk and benefit, it makes sense to hold off on less than 55 for now. And uh, what about those who have already been inoculated with the AstraZeneca vaccine? Uh, should they be concerned or are there any symptoms that they should look for? I, I think that's a very good question, and my own patients have asked me that quite a bit. The, the key concerning symptoms are of those symptoms of blood clots. So do we have shortness of breath, chest pain, leg swelling, abdominal pain, or sudden onset headaches or blurry vision tends to put us uh, at high alert. But for the most part, we don't expect too much here. Uh, and what we do know is if you've had this shot and it's been more than 20 days, there's no risk at that point. All right. Now, I know you're not part of Health Canada, Dr. Rout, but how long would it likely take to determine this vaccine's overall safety? That's a very good question. I think what we'll find is that as we have more options available, uh, Health Canada may have to make a tough call and say, OK, is this something we continue with AstraZeneca or we change it completely? Germany has certainly looked at that in more detail uh, as well. So we don't know anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. All right, Dr. Raut, uh, what do we know so far about the overall safety of other vaccines that are approved for use in Canada? We know Moderna, Pfizer-BioNTech and Johnson & Johnson vaccines are approved for use here. That's right. So Moderna and Pfizer, both great choices, 95% effective against COVID-19 after the second shot. Also, they reduce the risk of severe illness uh, in case you do become infected. Johnson & Johnson vaccine, 85% effective there against severe forms. And AstraZeneca is the, at 79% uh, at this point here. When you compare the side effects and adverse effects, this gets more interesting. The side effects are very similar between all of the vaccinations. You can get the muscle aches, fevers, and chills. But the adverse effect, this blood clot issue, we have not seen that with Moderna, Pfizer, or Johnson & Johnson yet. It doesn't mean it may not happen, but we just haven't seen it. Very interesting, Dr. Rout. So in terms of vaccine hesitancy, how should officials handle cases of vaccine hesitancy around the use of AstraZeneca's vaccine in particular, sir? About 40 seconds left. 
Yeah, and I think this is where, you know, I think officials really need to focus on the evidence and the reason for the vaccination of AstraZeneca. The most important reason here is still that a person who's 65 and above has almost 30 times more risk of death and hospitalization than an 18-year-old. So uh, the important message here is take whatever vaccine we can get because the risk versus benefit still pushes for vaccination as much as possible.